In this video we're going to look at probability and this is video one of uh, kind of a crash course on probability in um, ma mathematics. Okay so you start off by looking at this thing here which is called the probability scale and the probability scale always operates from zero to one with one of course being something definitely happening uh, and zero being impossible to happen and everything can be measured along that probability scale every single event nothing can be outside from zero to one now as i said one is sorry zero is impossible whereas one is definite definitely going to happen and in the middle 0 0.5 that implies that an event has a 50 50 chance or an even chance of happening and in between 0 to 0 0.5 is a varying degree of unlikeliness so the closer you get to 0 the more unlikely something is of happening and the closer you get to 0 0.5 it's beginning to become likely but it definitely becomes likely once you go above 0 0.5 up to highly unlikely and then of course one is definite now there are very few things in life that are one and very few things in life that are zero most things have some level of probability to them so what is this probability well in essence probability is the number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes possible okay so it's in fraction form in that sense so I'll give you an example if I play a game on a spinner and the spinner is like this one shown here there are two yellow slots two green slots two blue slots and two lilac slots I win if it lands on green so what is the probability that I win? Now remember, to work out probability, you get the number of successful outcomes. So how would I be successful? If it lands on green, and there's two green. So two divided by the total number of outcomes in that spinner. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight segments in the spinner. So it's 2 out of 8, which of course can be simplified to 1 out of 4. And we leave it in fraction form. If you wanted to turn it into percentage form, you'd multiply by 100, and that would give you 25%. I have a 25% chance of winning. But more relevant is if we turn it into decimal form, because then we can see where it fits on the probability scale. And 1, point, 1 over 4 uh, as a fraction changed to a decimal is, of course, 0 0.25. Now, if we go back up to our probability scale and see where that would fit, well, 0 0.2 is here and 0 0.3 is here. So 0 0.25 is in the middle of those two numbers. So it's actually unlikely that we will win in this particular game because it's somewhere between 0 and 0 0.5. We're in that segment of the probability scale that's unlikely to happen. So if you were a gambling person, you wouldn't put a lot of money on winning this game. In basic English, there are more slots that lose it for you than would win it for you. Okay, there are six that lose and two that win. So you're unlikely to win. Another example, if I have a bucket, and in that bucket there are numbered balls from 1 to 10. Now, I win if I pull out a 2, okay, a 2. Well, going by my uh, method of working out probability, the number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, how many 2s are there? Let me see. I can only see one of them. So there's only one successful outcome for me. And that is, if I get a 2, there's only one successful outcome out of a total of 10 numbered balls. So 1 over 10 is the probability that I win in this particular game, which on the probability scale changed to a decimal is 0 0.1. Again, from 0 to 1, there's 0 0.5 in the middle, 0 0.1 is way down here. 
it would be in the highly unlikely category and again common sense why well because there's too many balls there's a lot more balls that lose it for me than win it for me how about if I win if I get an even number well how many even numbers are there there's that two again okay so that's two four six eight ten there's five possible balls that win it for me in this game so that's five out of ten which changed to a decimal is 0 0.5 still wouldn't want to bet a huge amount of money on it because it's only a 50 50 chance how about this one if I win if I get a prime number now prime numbers of course are numbers that are divisible by either one or themselves so the prime numbers in this are two three five and seven they're the prime numbers from one to ten there are four of them so the probability I win is 4 over 10 or 0 0.4 again it's unlikely now what if two events take place in a game so I not only let's say roll a dice but I also flip a coin and I want to list first of all all the possible outcomes of those two events and happening so I would draw up what's called a two-way table and in the two-way table all the outcomes are that are of two events are listed so I, let's say in, in, in tossing a coin, in, in tossing a coin, you have two outcomes, either heads or tails. And in rolling the dice, you have got six outcomes. There's no other possible outcomes. It has to land on one of those numbers, and the coin has to land on one of those um, outcomes, heads or tails. Now you could say it could land on the side of the coin, or the die could be tilted. But in that case, it's a bogus roll or toss and you'd have to roll again so I could flip a head followed by a one or I could flip a head followed by a two or a flip a head followed by a three etc etc and this is how you would list in a two-way table or I could roll, flip a tail and get a one or a tail and get a two or a tail and get a three these are all my outcomes so how many outcomes are possible when I do these two events well, count them up. That's possible. That's possible. That could have happened. That could have happened. That could have happened, etc., etc. And you'll see that in total, there are 12 possible outcomes. Now, I could have done that much quicker by just seeing how many was here. There's two here. And how many is here? There's six here. Two multiplied by six is 12. Okay, now it's not that difficult to count them up either, but there are 12 outcomes possible. So, what's the probability, therefore? that when I flip my coin and roll my die I will get a tail followed by a four well how many of those outcomes are there there's one so I would be successful with that one outcome out of a total of 12 so that's the probability I would get a tail followed by a four what's the probability I would get a tail followed by an even number well that's that outcome that outcome and that outcome so that's 3 out of 12. Slightly better probability of that happening. And that's how that works. It's just a little bit more complicated. What if two die are rolled, or two dice are rolled? Well, it's the same idea. We would just have to list all the outcomes. From 1 to 6 on one of them, and 1 to 6 on the other. So I could get a 1 followed by a 1 or a 1 followed by a 2, or a 1 followed by a 3, or a 1 followed by a 4, etc, etc. Now what if I was told that when I, do, when I roll both dice, I add my result together. So if I got a 1 and a 1 on the green one, and a 1 on the blue on the lilac one, I would get a 2 in total. If I got a 1 on the lilac one and a 2 on the green one, I would have a 3 in total, etc, etc. And I would go through adding them up. Now, at the end of all of this, you might be asked a question such as how many outcomes are even? Or how many outcomes are odd? Or how many outcomes are prime? Etc. Etc. And you would just have to find out how many outcomes of that there are and then put it over the total amount of outcomes possible to work out the probability. You'll see at some stage a pattern very clear pattern developing in this and maybe you've spotted it already 
And then on the last one we have a 7, 8, 9, 10. And of course the biggest number possible is when you get two sixes to get 12. Now you can see it's very much linked. So all the sixes are in order there and all the sevens. There's a clear pattern to all of this. So let's do one. What is the probability that I will get, let's say, a prime number? Now, a prime number can come up in any section of the maths course. It doesn't tend to come up on its own. It would come up in this sense. So remember, we need to remember what a prime number is. A prime number can only be divided by two numbers. It can only be divided by the number one and the number itself. Okay, that's the only two numbers that can go into a prime number. We don't consider 1 a prime number because 1 can only be divided by one number. A prime number has to be divisible by two numbers. So the first prime number is, of course, 2, because all that can be divided by is 1 and 2. Then 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number. Back to 3 again, 5 again, 7 again back to 5 again, 7 again. 9 is not a prime number because 3 can divide into it, so we don't include that. 11 is a prime number. The only numbers that can go into 11 are 1 and 11. So how many prime numbers are there there in total? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 15 prime numbers. So the probability of rolling a prime number when I add the outcomes of my two dice together is 15 out of 36, because there's 36 outcomes in that box in total. Now if I spin two spinners, I have a different way of writing it. I don't have to do a two-way table. I can draw a tree diagram. And a tree diagram is the same idea with the outcomes listed one after the other. So the event one, what are the outcomes in that if I spin this spinner? Well, I could get a 1, or I could get a 2, or I could get a 3, or I could get a 4. Now, what if I got a 1, and then I went on to my second event? What are my two outcomes then? Well, I could either get yellow, or I could get blue. And what if I rolled a 2 in event number 1? What would I get in my second? I could get a yellow, or I could get a blue. And likewise for 3, I could get a yellow, or a blue, or a yellow, or a blue. So, all the different possible outcomes here. I could get a 1 and a yellow. I could get a 1 and a blue. I could get a 2 and a yellow. Or a 2 and a blue. 3 and a yellow. 3 and a blue. Or 4 and a yellow. 4 and a blue. They're all my outcomes. How many outcomes are there in total? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, a quicker way of doing it would be numbering how many outcomes are in this one. There's four. Numbering how many outcomes there are in this one. There's only two. I know there's four boxes, but there's only two colors, so there's only two outcomes. And four multiplied by two is eight. And that would have been a quicker way of working out how many op outcomes are there in total. Okay, very last thing then is we need to know the deck of cards. So the deck of cards is extremely important in probability questions because it comes up repeatedly. In a deck of 52 cards in total, it's made up of 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13 hearts, and 13 diamonds. That adds up to 52. Those no names that I just said, they are the suits. So you've got four suits, clubs, spades, which are black, they're here, and hearts and diamonds, which are red, they're there. Now, the probability of getting a red card, if you drew a card at random, is quite straightforward. There's 26 red cards, so the probability is 26 over 52, which simplified down is a half. There's also, if I said, what's the probability of getting a heart? Well, there's 13 hearts, so the probability of getting a heart is 13 out of 52. A queen, well, how many queens are there? Four queens, there's the four of clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds, so four out of 52, which of course can be simplified to one over 13. A red queen, now that's putting a little limit on my options, there's only two of those, the two of the queen of hearts and the queen of diamonds, so that's two out of 52, which of course simplifies to one over 26. And then a card less than six, well how many of those are there? There's all of these cards here are less than six. One, two, three, four, five, and there's four of those, so that's 20 over 52 and very lastly a picture card well a picture card are these face cards up here there's 12 of them so it's 12 over 52